moment, the moment you've all been waiting for. Mm, oh my God. <laughs> Hey guys, it's me, Candice the Edgy Veg. Today, I thought that I would show you guys how to make a Irish-inspired steak sandwich. I'm so excited because today's video is sponsored by Napoleon. I don't really celebrate St. Patrick's Day, much like I don't celebrate a lot of those kind of holidays, but I, I do kind of because of the food. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a portobello steak into a steak sandwich, and also how to veganize the very popular Irish dish side dish, Colcannon, which is essentially potatoes and greens, but it's just, it's it's not that simple, it's so good. And we are going to be cooking the portobello burgers on the barbecue. So yeah, a little bit more on Napoleon later. Let's look at our ingredients, our dishes, and kind of give a little run through of what we're going to do. All right, so the steak part of our Irish steak sandwich is going to be portobello mushrooms. I'm going to do like my basic portobello steak, but, the great thing about this sandwich, we're going to use Guinness to kind of make it like a, there's something called a Dubliner dip. It's a dip with like onions and Guinness and cheese and it's really, really tasty. So that was kind of the inspiration for this sandwich. But I'm also going to show you how to make a Guinness barbecue sauce. So Guinness is kind of like the big show here, the hero flavor for a lot of this. We're gonna start with marinating these mushrooms. I would definitely marinate them for no less than 30 minutes. You could even do them overnight. This recipe is a really good kind of make ahead recipe. But yeah, so ingredients wise, we of course have portobello mushrooms, the bigger the better. If you want four sandwiches, which is anywhere between kind of like four and six are good depending on their size. I'm going to marinate that in steak spice. So whatever your favorite steak spice is, is fine. Even if you have one of those like burger mix, like spice mix in things, you could use that. We have some vegan Worcestershire, liquid smoke, of course, olive oil and balsamic vinegar. All right, so get yourself a dish that is shallow, but big enough for your portobello mushrooms. I find these casserole dishes are just perfect for that or if you have one of those long Tupperwares. And I'm just gonna mix the marinade right in the dish. So starting off with the vinegar, we have the vegan Worcestershire. If you don't have access to vegan Worcestershire, you can just use barbecue sauce, that's fine. Olive oil, liquid smoke, and our steak spice. And then just give it a quick mix. And then we have our portobello mushrooms. So either with your hands or a pastry brush, just make sure that it's all covered. Mix it around first and then go in with the pastry brush after. And it doesn't need to be completely submerged in the marinade, obviously, because there's definitely not enough for that. Just as long as it's completely covered, you're fine. And just place them in the fridge for a minimum 30 minutes. And for the sandwich recipe, I mean, this is also a great sandwich to make with leftover portobello, or I mean, you can make this steak ahead of time as well. The cheese dip that we're going to make or the cheese sauce, also is great as a dip, of course, or you know, put it in a grilled cheese sandwich or put it on nachos. It's really delicious. And I'm not using salt or tamari in this marinade because a lot of steak spices, especially if they're dry rubs, have quite a bit of salt in them, so I don't wanna oversalt it. But I'm just going to place these in this dish with the gill side up. Put that in the fridge and let it marinate for 30 minutes or however long you want. All right, for the cooking part of this, we're going to kind of pre-cook them before I put them on the barbecue later. The barbecue is amazing for that char smoky taste, but I wanna get them flat first before they go on the barbecue so that they don't have to spend too much time on the barbecue. So I'm heating up a frying pan. I like to use a nonstick for this and a pretty high heat and the key with mushrooms is that you don't want to crowd them in the pan or else they're never going to get that like really robust like browned flavor and texture they're just going to end up getting soggy because they're kind of steaming in their own liquid but i'm going to throw them onto a piping hot pan never throw your mushrooms on before it's super hot or else you're not going to get the desired flavor and texture and then i'm going to squish them with my cast iron pan you can also do this in a cast iron pan i just find because they're being kind of pressed and squished and flattened on a cast iron pan sometimes they can stick one and you want to do this stem side down so again leaving lots of space between them all right we're going to let them cook for kind of three to five ish minutes until they release some of their liquid okay now I'm going to take my heavy cast iron pan if you have I don't know a pot or a Dutch oven and you don't have a cast iron pan use that and I'm gonna start by just kind of setting it on top 
and it's gonna naturally flatten before I add kind of some pressure and elbow grease to that. For the barbecue sauce, I mean, you can use whatever barbecue sauce is your favorite, but in the spirit of, you know, St. Patty's and the Irish, I'm going to use mine. I'm going to make mine with Guinness. So starting off with some ketchup and we have some Guinness here, of course, orange juice, orange zest, spices, your typical paprika, garlic, onion, salt and pepper, brown sugar, Worcestershire, and a brown or Dijon mustard. And I'm just gonna put all of those into a tiny saucepan and bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes. All right, that's been about two minutes. I'm going to lift that off. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to deglaze the pan a little bit. And just adding that back on there. I'm turning down the heat a little bit because it is quite hot. So kind of like a medium. That's what you want for the rest of this. All right, I'm just gonna lift this up, kind of, if they're stuck to the bottom, get them off, move this and then come back here. So now I'm going to turn the heat back up just because it's not being pressed right to the pan. And I'm going to cook that for another few minutes just until that liquid evaporates. After your 10 minutes, you can add in the orange zest. So now you can take your barbecue sauce and put it into a jar or Tupperware or however you want to store it and just let it cool. While all of this is happening, I'm going to work on the potatoes and the greens and cabbage and everything for the Kulkanen. So pretty much it's potatoes, greens. It's usually kale or spinach or chard or cabbage, but I like the combination of the kale and the cabbage. They both have very different textures, so I really like that and of course, it's mashed potatoes, so we need butter, soy milk, and of course spices. Oh, and there's green onions in that as well. So the first thing you want to do for your Kulkanen is just heat up some water. What we are going to do is blanch both the kale and the chard until they're bright green. Set that aside, and I'm just going to use like a sieve or something to take them out, but we're going to use the same water for the potatoes. But like cooking potatoes for anything else, you wanna make sure that you season your water. So you only want to cook this for about one to two minutes or until it's bright green. All right, tossing in the potatoes. Whoop, not gracefully at all. I swear to God, I haven't been drinking the Guinness. I swear. I just like to do things with gusto. All right, I'm going to bring these back up to a boil and then cook them for about 15 minutes or until they are fork tender. Okay, so while all of this is happening, I am heating up some olive oil in another pan to caramelize some onions, and I'm going to start on the uh, Guinness cheese sauce as well. You can use vegan butter or margarine, whichever one is your favorite. Okay, now adding in our onions to caramelize them. I like red onion, mainly for the flavor and also just because of how pretty it looks on the sandwich, but I mean, really, you can caramelize any onion that you want. Cheese sauce, you need a roux. Let's make a roux. Flour, butter, whisk, roux. So just whisk that constantly for about two minutes. That should take a lot of the flour flavor out because it will be cooked. While whisking, I'm slowly going to start adding our Guinness. I mean, you can really do this with any beer, but I like the uh, the flavor of the Guinness specifically. And if you're worried about alcohol content in cooking, we are actually cooking all of the alcohol out of the beer. I've switched from a whisk to just a silicone spatula. You can also use, of course, a wooden spoon. Adding in some mustard. Any mustard you want is fine. Then, once that's mixed in, I'm gonna turn down the heat to like a medium low, and I'm going to add in my cheese. So this is a combination of both cheddar and mozzarella. You can do one or the other, or a different type of cheese that you want. Slowly, I'm going to start adding in some vegan milk. Whatever your favorite plant-based milk is your favorite, use that. Um, when it comes to cooking, I definitely recommend soy or one of the like pea protein ones or even oat milk. And then go in every once in a while and stir your onions. So when you deglaze the pan, you get 
all of that nice caramelization off of the pan and into your onions. Don't add brown sugar on top of it. You want that natural caramelization. You don't have to add brown sugar or maple syrup or anything. I mean, if you're doing it for the flavor, fine, but I prefer just good old fashioned caramelizing onions. You will most likely end up adding about a cup of whatever milk you're choosing. All right, keep going until everything is melted. All right, when everything is ready, you've got your caramelized onions, your cold cannon is about to go, you've got your cheese sauce. I then just like to add my Guinness barbecue sauce. Because barbecue sauce is sweet, it has sweet ingredients, you're going to get a really nice caramelized char from the sauce. All right, let's take this out to our Napoleon barbecue. All right, so I can see on my thermometer here on my barbecue, we are at searing range. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, that searing sound on the wave grill. So these grills, one of the reasons why I love them so much is because they're cast iron. The cast iron kind of acts like a non-stick. Um, it makes it a lot easier to remove. And there's just so much space and it's so easy to use. So we're gonna let those cook for a couple minutes and then we're going to grill our buns. I've just buttered them on each side. Yeah, one of my favorite things about the barbecue is how easy it is to light. So my specific model that I love so much, which I think is really perfect for a two-person household or more, especially if you love to entertain, is the Rogue 425 XT. I'm completely obsessed with it. It also has ba -da -da, a side burner. Okay, oh, and it tells you where the sizzle zone is. That's exactly what we're going for. That gorgeous char. And then the second side, probably we'll just need like a minute or two. I'm just gonna throw on my buns. That is what we are going for. Let's put this thing together. Mashed potatoes, you know what to do. I like to do my mashed potatoes, mash my mashed potatoes with my ricer. I'm just gonna go ahead and toss those in there. Oops. No lumps, please. Dun, 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 dun. When I'm about half-ish of the way through, so after this one, I like to go ahead and add my butter so it can start to melt. But um, So that's gonna just hang out there and melt. All right, so we can see here that the butter is melted. Depending on what kind of potatoes you use, um, we'll kind of dictate how much uh, milk you're using. I'm using soy milk. That's like a nice nuttiness. And also, again, it's high in protein. So I'm just making sure that all of the potatoes have some butter, have some milk. Now, we're gonna add in about two thirds of our onions and then all of our cabbage and kale. And I also like to add a sprinkle of parsley and then season with salt and pepper and you're good to go. So the reason why I like to mix both cabbage and kale together is because I really like both the difference in texture and flavor, but also the color. Like I just love how vibrant and green the kale is. Now that everything's done, more or less, we can build our sandwich. I have my portobellos here. I'm just going to slice them into, the other option that you can do is also um, with a fork shred them almost like a pulled pork or what you'll get is something like that. I'm going to do a little bit of a drizzle of barbecue sauce because I am also adding barbecue sauce to the actual bun itself. There we go. All right, let's build some sandwiches. So I like to add a little bit of that sauce on the bottom and then a handful of your favorite greens. And then I like to do a nice pile of the mushrooms, a nice pile of the Onion. And then we're going to go in with our sauce. All right, you guys, there we have a St. Patty's Day inspired steak sandwich. This was really fun to make. And thank you so much to Napoleon for sponsoring today's video and continuing to sponsor us here. We love you. <laughs> Key highlights. Um, if you want more information about Napoleon, I'm going to leave a link to them in the description box down below. If you are interested in grabbing yourself the same barbecue I have, I have the Rogue XT425 and we're completely obsessed with it. And the moment you've all been waiting for.
Mm, oh my God. Every time I do one of these sandwich recipes or burger recipes, I'm like, this is my favorite one. But then I do another one and it's also my favorite one. Holy. If you would like to celebrate St. Patty's, please be safe. You can make this at home and you know, have a, have a Guinness, have a, a, a green beer or a green smoothie. All right, so this is our coal cannon. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it is, it's like super elevated mashed potatoes. Like you might just be like, Candace, you made mashed potatoes. No, it's better. Make the sandwich. If you like these recipes, give this video a big thumbs up. If you have recipe requests, please put them in the comment section down below. I'm not getting as many requests as I usually do. Literally anything you want veganized, I'll do it for you. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Bye.